Hey guys, happy Wednesday. Hope everybody is doing well out there today. Uh, the last couple of videos I've done uh, have talked about Cloudflare and that sort of thing. So uh, one of the big comments that keeps recurring over the past few videos is, how do I set up Cloudflare to automatically update my IP address if I've got a dynamic IP from my internet service provider? So uh, what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna show you how to do that through a Docker container. Um, so let's jump over to my desktop real quick and take a look. Uh, this is my main account. We're not actually gonna use this account, but I'm bringing this one up uh, for just a moment to show a couple of things. Uh, here, I've actually got a couple of API tokens already set up and we're gonna have to go through the process of setting up an API token for the Docker container that we're going to use. Um, but if we look over here, we can see the token name, uh, permissions, uh, resources, that sort of thing. Uh, this Raspberry, uh, Doc Starter, uh, this is way back when I did my Doc Starter uh, Raspberry Pi video. Um, but if we come over here, we can see it was last used a month ago. Uh, that container uh, hasn't been live to update uh, Cloudflare in about a month, so it hasn't been used in that long. However, uh, the one that I use for all my other stuff here you can see was updated 39 minutes ago. Now the reality is I've got a static IP so I don't necessarily need this, but if my hardware changes like my modem and, uh, and my, my ISP gives me a new modem and thus a new IP address, I just have this running in the background. It's an extra precautionary step so I don't have to remember to go in and adjust all of my uh, IP addresses and my DNS. Okay, so uh, behind the scenes, I logged out of uh, my main account. I logged into my new account. Um, so what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna come over here up to the top right, uh, click on my profile. We're gonna go to API tokens. We're going to create a new token. And we're gonna come down to the bottom where it says create custom. And then we're gonna give this a name. We're gonna call this DDNS. So you can call it whatever you want. Uh, I'm just calling it that for, for me. Uh, we're gonna create three of these uh, permissions that are all going to be zone. Like so. First one should be zone settings and that should be read. And then the next one is zone and that one is read. And the last one is DNS and that one is edit. Uh, we're gonna say all zones, uh, you can say from an, from an account, uh, we'll just select my account there. And then we'll go ahead and click on uh, continue to summary. Uh, that all looks right. So we'll go ahead and click on create token. Here is that token. I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. And I'm just gonna drop that over there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to open up my stacks. I'm gonna add a new stack and I'm just gonna drop that in there. So then what I'm gonna do is actually copy this and we're gonna paste this in here and then we're gonna, we're gonna change some things. So this API key I'm gonna put in there. I'm gonna call this uh, dbtech, oops, demo.com. And uh, subdomain, I'm actually just gonna take that out. We don't need it. Proxy is going to be true. Uh, I'm gonna add PUID equals uh, 998 and P, oops, PGID equals uh, 100. Of course, you'll wanna change those to be uh, correct for your setup uh, for container or for, for portainer rather than container. So uh, once we've got that, oh, of course we need to give it a name. Uh, I like to skip names for some reason. Uh, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and uh, deploy the stack. We'll give this a minute to download and extract and do its thing. Uh, let's let's take a look here, make sure that this is all up and running. Uh, everything here looks good. Uh, of course, it updated uh, my IP address from 1234567.8 to my actual IP address there, which I'll have to blank out. Uh, you're just gonna have to trust that uh, I'm gonna leave uh, the first and last digit to show that those are different. And then when I come over here uh, to here, there you can see that it updated there as well. Um, so there you go, that's the process. Now, the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do when you start adding subdomains for, let's say you've got uh, notes.yourdomain.com or whatever the case may be, uh, what you wanna do is actually come down here when you add those subdomains and go to CM. Uh, in, in my case, let's say we were setting up notes.dbtechdemo.com. We would just do notes and then at, and we would change this to DNS only and click save. And then we would go through the process of setting up that domain through Nginx Proxy Manager. Once the SSL is configured, uh, then we would come back in here and change this like that and click save. And uh, then we should be good to go. All right, guys, there you go. There is how to set up a, a Cloudflare DDNS container on your home server so that if you've got a dynamic IPv4 or IP or just a, an IPv4 address, uh, it should automatically update anytime your ISP changes your internet or your, uh, your IP address. 
So hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, things actually have changed since the last time I deployed it. And I actually had to record this video twice as a result because I thought I knew what I was doing going into this. But uh, now that it's I figured it out, here we go. Uh, so hopefully, like I said, you found the video helpful. If you did, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. It would help me out a bunch. Uh, also, if you're interested in this kind of content, get subscribed. And if you want to uh, help support the channel, there are a couple of support links in the description down below. Uh, and I want to give a big shout out to my patrons uh, for helping me maintain the channel uh, by kicking me a few bucks every month. Really does help me out quite a bit. So uh, with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up here. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support. And I'll talk to you in the next video.